Okay, guys, we're very sorry for the delay, um, but I'm very happy that you all patiently waited for us and trusted in us. Um, I present you uh, Rory, who is going to talk about vector tiles. We had a talk about vector tiles this morning, and we'll have a second one now. It seems it's some, uh, quite a thing. Okay, so this is the... Sorry about the technical details. Um, turns out Max can't read USB FAT32 thing. Um, let just start one thing. So, uh, we're a bit delayed. I'm going to talk to you about um, vector tiles. It's quite helpful. There's already been a talk about vector tiles because, uh, yes, uh, that's a good introduction. So I don't really need to explain a lot of the details uh, with that. Um, this will be a little bit more of a technical talk uh, and a bit more, you know, presuming you know a bit about um, map styling and OpenStreetMap Carto and that kind of thing and obviously vector tiles, but I refer you to uh, Lucas's speak, uh, talk earlier about that. Um, yes, so I'm Rory McCann, I work at Geofabric, here's a vector tiles talk. Okay. Yes. Right, uh, so the title is obviously porting the OpenStreetMap Carto style into vector tiles, because it's currently done in the um, um, non-vector tiles way. Um, uh, okay, presuming you know about vector tiles and uh, Carto style, it's been around a while. It's the main one that's on the OpenStreetMap.org uh, website, uh, and um, yes, it's very complicated. And so the goal was to port it to vector tiles, uh, not to have you know client-side rendering with um, um, JavaScript based stuff, but instead to have essentially the same API as what's there now, namely um, raster images served over HTTP, um, so that from a client endpoint it would look the same, except it's all made with vector tiles in the background. Okay, why would you want to do that? Uh, it makes it much easier to change the style if you want to make a little tweak for one person or, or one thing. Um, you don't have to you know, pre-render all your tiles and have tens of gigabytes of stuff because very few of the, um, when you have the, the uh, when you're serving tiles, you don't serve them all uh, straight from the database. Um, so you could turn off certain features or change the language. Um, so first thing you have to do is um, port it. So the basic bit to get started when you're using the OpenStreetMap Carto style uh, is you can just use um, uh, Tilemail or Cosmetic or something like that, and you can you can clone the the um, clone the GitHub thing and just start changing it yourself if you're using it. The okay, I'm just gonna call it like a raster tile for like old, old style. Um, so there's a lot of JavaScript based stuff um, for rendering and working with vector tiles. Uh, and in when I was playing, so Cosmetic can render the old style, and it can also render um, with vector tiles. And I was using um, a tile live based program called Tessera, which uh, you know run on the grand line, and you can um, render things vector tiles. So uh, the first thing you need to do is split it in half um, with an old old school way. Uh, you have one project that um, queries the database, converts the data into images, and serves the images up. Uh, with vector tiles, you basically have two. You have uh, one way that um, queries the database and produces a, a, a vector tile, uh, MVT tiles, and then you have another project that takes that data or those files and renders it into, in this case, a raster image. Uh, in, um, if you're doing a client side, you're only doing the, the first step and then your second step uh, of turning the vector tile into um, an image is basically done in, in JavaScript or whatever particular thing you're using. Uh, so the source and the style. Uh, the source makes the vector tiles and the style styles the vector tiles into images. Um, so we have to take the existing one and turn it in half, uh, split it in half. Um, your source file just has one file called data.yaml and it is, you can basically copy the project.yaml from the um, uh, open up Carto style and uh, tweak it. Uh, so the tweaks you need to do, um, 
you need to rename it, and then uh, you change your zoom to 14, and then uh, you can optionally remove your, um, although I think source, you might not have that, and then the styles because you don't need that. So that is the, all you'll be left with basically is oodles of SQL queries, which is what uh, converts your data. Uh, the style uh, has your MSS files and your, um, you have a project.yml and uh, you change your source to point to where your source is, or you add a source, uh, and that'll be like a URL type thing with uh, tile JSON or something like that. An annoying bit, as you can see, is you have .yml, not .yaml, which is what is in the uh, OpenStreetMap character style. Um, no, that's not all you need to do because that would be a very short talk. Um, <laughs> mostly, so basically this talk is, is, is mostly, what do you do next? Um, yes, I probably should have said, this is obviously, if, if you have an existing cartel style and you want to vector tileify it, this is kind of the, the talk you would uh, want. What you get is something that looks like this. Um, there should be roads there, there are no roads. Uh, and then if you zoom in, so this is Dublin, uh, you get lots of extraneous stuff and lots of missing stuff. And um, this is what you need to fix because you can't just copy it. So uh, left is the uh, output and the right is the uh, what it should look like. You've got no roads. You can't use classes on Carter classes on um, vector tiles. They kind of just get lost somewhere along the way. Uh, and that's why you don't have any roads, because they are used for rendering the roads. Um, so you, first thing you need to do is go through your style and uh, replace them all uh, with your um, ids, uh, with hash ids instead of dot class. Uh, not so bad for the OSM Carto, because there's a lot of sort of one-to-one -one or like one-to-two, so you can just find and replace that. Um, this is another big problem you're going to have um, with uh, with vector tiles is this is a, a national park and there's a green, can I get it? No, I can't. Uh, there's borders in the middle of your tiles. Um, you solve this with, um, and then, no, you can't see that one. Um, you have to solve this uh, with a buffer for your style. Um, when you have vector tiles, you take one tile of data and you style that, and that uh, is all you see, essentially, and um, you render from that. But you, that is sometimes not, depending on how you set up your style, like this, uh, it's not always going to work. So the problem is um, we have a, a, a green polygon here, and we have some uh, black vector tiles, and we want to render it, and we want to draw a little outline border, which is in the green. Um, and it gets split, because you, you get your um, you get your data and uh, s produce, for, and then your SQL queries will produce uh, data for each tile and then you render it. And when you say draw a line around the outside, well as far as each tile is concerned, the outside is at the edge of the tile and you get uh, lines through the middle. And you get this, which is not so nice. Um, the solution you have to do is change uh, your style yeah. Uh, to put a pixel size, um, which expands the data for each tile around uh, into um, outside land. And it only displays the bit inside the black, so it clips it, and then you get a properly rendered image. Um, when you're doing polygons, you can get by a very small one of about four pixels or so, but when you're doing labels, you have to have a big one, and I'll explain that in a bit. Typo. Um, another solution, instead of giving uh, the rendering a image, uh, a polygon, you can give it a boundary as a way, um, and then you are not telling Mapnik how to render a, um, you're telling Mapnik to draw a border around a, a polygon, you're instead giving it a line, you're saying draw this line. Um, you can do it that way, I can do it the other way. Um, I do do it in one case for this, um, but you have to be careful, another thing. Another problem you're going to have is, a, Polygon labels, the left is the naive view and of when you do nothing, and the right is what it should look like. Public theater has many, oops, border. Um, it's got labels four times. Similar problem, uh, you give Mapnik a green border, a green polygon, you say put a, put a label here, and it'll pick, say, a point in the middle, because when you're using meta tiles, it 
makes it all into uh, into um, it's able to look across the other borders. It spits it. It goes here. It's four polygons. Let's make uh, let's put a label in each one, uh, and so that's why you get four uh, label in, uh, a label in each tile. Um, this happens a lot. Address points, etc. Um, yeah, that basically just summarizes what was on the other one. So you have to you have to change your data to not give Mapnik a polygon, but a point, and you say, here's a point, draw a label here. Um, and then you are converting it into um, SQL. Uh, you, so you convert it in SQL, and then you give that a point. Um, yeah. So that means you only get one point instead of one for each tile. You can do that with uh, simple post stuff, centroid and the like, um, which is what I do. So, but, <coughs> but, uh, that has a problem that uh, you can't necessarily use Postgres indexes. So uh, you, because you've changed your SQL query, and that will make everything really slow, which is horrible. Um, so you can solve that by changing your SQL to put a where clause in there, and that'll do a, a geometric uh, um, bounding box query. And then Postgres can go, oh, I can use an index, and that's fine. Or you can make an index. Um, Similar to that, the other problem you're going to have is labels won't necessarily work. You will get this, where uh, Wicklow Mountains National Park is what it should say, and it is clipped. Um, similar problem, we have polygon, we have the point, and it wants to draw the name, and it goes, each tile is rendered separately, and yet the other tiles don't have a point, so you only see the first few characters, so you get this, which is not so nice. Solution, you use very big buffer, and it each neighboring tile will have the uh, next one. So that's a summary of the fixes you need to do. Um, the same problem happens with uh, lines and like label placements and for refs and shields, uh, shields like you know for A2 and stuff like that. Um, zooms. Um, the data gets simplified in vector tiles, and so when you're using use zoom. Zoom 15 and so forth, you use Zoom 14 levels, so they get simplified and everything looks rubbish. Uh, so you, your source needs to have a max zoom, and that way Mapnik knows, ah, I'm at the maximum zoom, I won't do any simplification, and that solves your problem. Um, it, 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 it. I, I tried to do a quick hack, don't do quick hacks, they don't work. Um, so next problem, all your, vector, your data might say, ah, oh, we don't need to have, you know, we don't need address points at zoom level 14, except that zoom level 14 tiles are used for zoom level uh, 17. So you need to include a min, uh, you need to change the min zoom on all your layers so that it will uh, include the data. Um, way pixels don't work because each, each zoom, um, the way pixel is, the, it's like the area and it is uh, calculated for each layer and, uh, but it is, um, each zoom, say 15 tile, will be using the data from zoom 14, which is not very nice. Um, so you need to basically expand your style to include all these manually calculated uh, weight pixels, which is a bit annoying. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> if you're using Node Mapnik, it does silly things where it basically goes, give me all the world, all the buildings in the world are ordered by area, and then give me the first five so I can tell that it's a polygon type, and then that takes ages and very slow. Uh, which you can do by changing the geometry. And I have, an OSQL, I have, a, I have a, a patch to maybe fix that. So thank you. That's done, because we have not a lot of time, because technical difficulties. Um, so that is, uh, has been released online. And um, yeah, so Finn. <laughs> I've been asked to say there's an OSM Carto Birds of a Feather tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So if you're interested more in that, come to this. All right, we have time for some questions about this very new and interesting uh, thing called vector tiles. Any questions? Raise your hand. Yes. Uh, uh, quick Sir. question. First of all, is the, are all these slides published anywhere? Sorry? Are the, are the slides published anywhere? Uh, not yet, but I will do. Yes, please. Yes, because uh, some good information there. Yeah, yeah. All right, another question. Raise your hand in front here. You, 
You touched on the issue of a buffer. I'm sorry, could I ask to keep quiet for a while? We are still asking questions. Guys in the back. You touched on the issue of uh, consistency of labels with uh, line strings, but you didn't explain what you did to solve that issue. Um, so like road labels. Right. So there's, there's two things that could be there, um, consistency of labels with roads. Uh, the buffer makes it sort of, you know, not be cut in half uh, across the tile border, which is one of the most obvious. If you don't do that, it will obviously look wrong. Um, you can get cases where you get sort of more road labels than you would want. Uh, I've just kind of ignored that as a sort of like, okay, it's not great cartographically, but it's not totally horrible and the, the only other real solution is to change your uh, query to return, to take a line and return points along the, the midpoint and put your labels there, which you can do, but that's a little bit more complicated, so uh, I took the easy way out. <laughs> and how do you find keeping in sync with upstream OpenStreetMap Cardo, which is a very active project? Uh, not so bad. Um, a lot of the cases you change, like, say I've changed the um, SQL query, so whenever there's an SQL query change, like, the git merge doesn't work. Um, not, not too bad, not just, you know, there's only about a half a dozen or, yeah, uh, changes that I have to make, so you kind of, it's okay. <laughs> as good as can be expected. All right, we have time for the last question. Please raise your hand if you have a question about vector tiles. This is your time. Yeah, I can go and get a coffee or something. No more? All right, then we're going to do a quick switch.